So right now is the perfect time to take hardwood cuttings. I love this time of year because we're just headed into spring and I know we're gonna have lots of plant propagation projects coming down the pike. So a lot of people are asking questions about hardwood cuttings right now. They wanna know if they can propagate them indoors or if they should propagate them outdoors. And I've got the answer for you here based on my opinion and my experience. It's winter time and we need something to do. We're headed towards spring, but we're not quite there yet. And this is the time I think when people just say, I wanna do something indoors. And one of the biggest things that they wanna do is get their fig cutting started. But you don't wanna rush this type of thing. Hardwood cuttings are traditionally rooted outdoors. If you go back 10 years, 20 years, People were rooting hardwood cuttings in nurseries outside in beds of sand, sometimes in soil as well, but they didn't typically take them indoors and root them in there. Maybe fig enthusiasts did, but the best way to do this is outdoors, not indoors. We bring them inside because like I said, it's winter time and we need something to do inside and we're having a lot of fun in there and we just wanna see something root. However, in my experience, it's not a good idea to force these roots to grow too fast. These are hardwood cuttings after all. And when it comes to fig cuttings and willows, these things root really quickly. However, they're still hardwood cuttings, they're dormant plant material, and they typically root slower than a softwood cutting, like a petunia or a hydrangea. And so, in my experience, it's not good to force them to do this too fast. In my experience, low and slow is the way you wanna cook these puppies. Now, I know a few years ago, in fact, it was probably three or four years ago, I did that fig rooting video out here and I'm not talking about the fig rooting where I got a 100% success rate. I'm talking about one that I did a year or two before that where I was trying to force these figs to root as fast as possible and see just how quickly I could get them to root. And by applying bottom heat, how much bottom heat could I use to get them to grow quicker without burning them up essentially. And it turned out to be a fun project and some of these things rooted in it's been a few years, but I'm thinking it was like a week or 10 days or something. And so that was just a fun experiment. And I, you know, I encourage you guys to branch out and try different things. And it was a lot of fun. However, I typically like to let these hardwood cuttings just develop slowly. I find that when you just take your time and you let these cuttings slowly warm up and slowly wake up with the outside influences like the sun and the weather, they typically do better in general. They, they acclimate to what's going on with the outdoors and there's no issues with pests to deal with or rotting issues or you know drying out issues or anything like that. So. Let me try to circle this back around and answer that question I started in the beginning of this specifically. And the big question is, should I bring these cuttings indoors or should I root them outdoors? And my answer is, root them outdoors, guys. I've also done projects where I've rooted fig cuttings inside in you know, a warm environment, indoors where it's like you know, in my house, 70 degrees, 68 degrees, something like that. Inside of homes tends to be a drier condition. The cuttings are more prone to drying out. Now, I know a lot of people will wrap their hardwood cuttings with uh, grafting tape and you know plastic wrap and that kind of stuff to keep them from drying out. I don't like to do this because I feel like it traps moisture around the cutting, which is exactly what they're doing, and it can also promote rot and mold if any mold spores or fungal spores are trapped underneath there if you haven't cleaned them good enough. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. A lot of people do that, and a lot of people do that very successfully. I just personally don't like doing that myself. So, when you do things indoors like that, it, it you're, you're, try, you're gonna get the top growth with the bottom growth because it's warm inside. The ambient air around the cutting is warm and the bottoms are warm. Now I get the question, should I use bottom heat indoors as well? I would say no. I've done experiments with that in the past as well. And the bottom heat coupled with the fact that the cuttings are indoors just is too much heat. You're trying to force things to happen too fast. Plus you've got all the dry air. I feel like it's a recipe for disaster. And can you get them to root that way? Absolutely, I've done it. I've gotten lots of cuttings to root that way. 
I don't feel like it's the best method, especially for somebody just starting out trying to figure out how to root their hardwood cuttings. So what do I recommend? Well, as usual, I, I've been doing lots of fig cuttings every year and trying different methods, lots of different methods. And it's going to sound ridiculous, but my favorite method to date that is just about as foolproof as it comes is to just stick these things in pots of a good draining inert material right now, March, April time frame before those buds swell and start breaking and then just let them acclimate slowly with the, with the outside temperature, with the ambient air, with the sun, with everything else that's going on out here. Why do I like to do that? So I literally just stick them in a pot out here now. I did this last year. I did a little video about it, but I literally just stick them in a pot and just leave them alone and then water them occasionally. I like doing thing that, things that way because it gives them time to slowly but surely root. <laughs> I, I don't know how else to say that. When you try to force things and put them outside of what nature wants to do, you end up inviting more problems every time, like drying out of the cuttings, pests, fungal issues, mold issues, uh, just all kinds of issues that you don't get when you let things happen naturally, when you let nature take its course with these hardwood cuttings. Now, I will say, <laughs> And this is where it gets a little fun for those of you who want to push it a little bit, push the envelope. And that is using bottom heat outside with your hardwood cuttings. I do endorse that. I, I've done it. You've seen that video probably. Uh, I did it a couple years ago. I'll put a link in the description if you guys haven't seen it yet. But if you set all these cuttings up the way I'm recommending, just in a good draining inert material outdoors and you put them on bottom heat, a gentle bottom heat, not a hundred degrees like I did in a video like four years ago, but a gentle bottom heat where it's only 10 degrees warmer than the ambient air. You will be coaxing those roots to come out a little sooner. And I feel like that can, that can be helpful in speeding up the root process before you get the top growth. And I, I feel like you get a little bit more assured rooting, especially if you have varieties of figs or some other plant that roots by hardwood cuttings, especially if you have those those ones where you absolutely need them to root. I feel like the bottom heat outdoors can be very helpful. Now, I'm sure I'll get the question about watering these things. So now that they're outdoors, how often do I water them? Well, right now in my area, and this is going to differ for you guys, I'm sure, depending on where you live, but in my area, I'm in zone 8B, Western Washington State. It is cloudy for, you know, most of the spring till we get up into June, July, actually halfway through June, probably. We do get sun here and there. We get a little bit of sun today. It's kind of nice, but the temperatures stay relatively mild. So we probably won't see too many more freezes. We're in, you know, it's March 3rd today. We won't see too many more freezes. We may see some freezes, but it's not going to be anything real detrimental. We may or may not get a little bit of snow, but it melts pretty quickly. So it's still pretty cool. It's still pretty damp out here. The cuttings aren't actively growing yet. They haven't put out roots to absorb moisture. So those pots of medium are going to remain damp and moist. And so if you don't have them on bottom heat, you probably won't have to water them for a month. I don't know. I just got to watch them and see. If you do have them on bottom heat, you might have to water them every couple weeks. However, when I did that video a couple of years ago where I rooted them outdoors on bottom heat, I don't even, I, I really, I'd have to go back and look at the video, but I don't think that I watered those cuttings at all. I think I just took the spray bottle and spritzed the tops just to keep the top of the bark or the rooting medium moist. I think I did that every other day or so. And so watering them when you're rooting them outdoors is a lot, you're doing a lot less of it, unless you're trying to root them further into the summer, which is very possible. And the, you know, it's very hot. Like I, I did some cuttings last year with the mulberry and the figs where I actually stuck the cuttings in like, I think it was late May or something. And it was getting hotter around here and those pots were drying out quicker. So I was watering them every other day or so. Um, and they can handle that as, as long as you have a good inner well-draining material. So 
you're going to kind of have to gauge it by you know your climate your temperatures and what the what the medium looks like this isn't something i would especially with expensive fig varieties this isn't something i would just set and forget you don't have to do a lot and you don't have to sit and stare at the things but you do want to keep an eye on them every couple days make sure things are looking good now by doing this out here one real big advantage that you have is those cuttings are going to be a lot less likely to dry out and die on you like they will indoors because it's it's moist out here. It's cool out here. The tops are cool. They're not losing a ton of moisture fast. The air isn't dry like in your house, pulling the moisture out of those cuttings. And so they've got more time to set down roots and then stay moist in the cutting before they dry out. And then once they get roots, they can start absorbing moisture. And then that top growth is just going to blow up for you. So there you go. So I hope that helps some of you guys out there that are asking about hardwood cuttings right now. Right now is an absolute fantastic time to take hardwood cuttings. And I'd encourage you to go out and just experiment and have fun. Try this multiple ways. Take some cuttings of the same plant so you, you know you've got a controlled experiment. Put some of the cuttings indoors. Put some indoors on bottom heat. Put them outdoors. Put them outdoors on bottom heat. Try different things and just look and see what happens. That's what I've been doing here over the years. And we're learning a lot on this channel. I'm learning a lot as I try these different experiments. And experimenting can be a lot of fun and just be very educational for your own purposes in your area for your climate. So if you got something out of this and you like this one, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to follow along. Have a fantastic week, guys. And I'll be back to answer more gardening questions.